DSG, so in the EFF, we strongly believe that economic uh, emancipation, in fact, women's emancipation, it's not possible without women's economic emancipation. How does that uh, relate to the struggles for for women? Um, that is true. We cannot um, fully realize uh, economic emancipation without um, women economic emancipation as a country. If we are genuinely so about that cause, we need to be able to empower the majority of mm -hmm. the population. Mm -hmm. That is women. Mm -hmm. We need to have strict strategic methods that are going to see that realization happening. Mm -hmm. Because majority of the population in South Africa is women. Mm -hmm. When we can be able to free those women yeah. from any bondage mm -hmm. that is hindering them for their success, for them to fully participate mm -hmm. in our economy and to fully add value to who we are as a society. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to empower those women in any position, in any um, job opportunities, in any industry that those women want to find themselves in. Mm -hmm. Because when you have the majority being dependent on the state, being dependent on social grants, what kind of reality of economic emancipation you want to achieve. So we need to allow women a space where they are going to fully participate mm -hmm. to bring new innovations, new ideas, and to even bring, uh, bring new things in the country. For oh God. And sex work is work, is considered as work uh, in the EFF because the EFF wants to decriminalize uh, sex work. Yes, we need to understand that sex work is work. And as the <laughs> EFF, <laughs> we are advocating for that. Yeah. And we, we, we are committing that we are going to be the voice of those women mm -hmm. who are doing sex work and who finds themselves being violated mm -hmm. every day whilst they are on duty. Mm -hmm. We find that they feel that they cannot be able to report if there's any harassment, any mm -hmm. violation or, in, or any abuse. So as the EFF, we understand that this woman, they are doing this work mainly because they need to support themselves. Mm -hmm. They need to support their kids. And we also understand that the rate of the unemployment in South Africa it is so high. Mm -hmm. That is why we need to decriminalize it. We need to make sure that these women feel that in the space of their workspace, mm -hmm. they can be able to go and say, I was abused mm -hmm. and their matters are taken seriously by the police and not to, to laugh at them. Mm -hmm. So as the EFF, we are going to make sure that it is indeed decriminalized very soon. Oh God. And when we look at the LGBTQIA plus community, in case I want to switch to being, hi darling, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, how do, how will the EFF, how will the EFF government really um, advocate and stand up and protect the members of the LGBTQIA plus community? Okay. No one, no one must be um, discriminated because of their gender expression. Mm -hmm. No one should be um, discriminated because of their existence, because of the who they are. The LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. it's, it's who they are. It is their identity. It is their existence. Mm -hmm. So as the EFF, we need to give them a safe space, a safe environment, a safe society, where they can live freely, knowing that they are protected, mm -hmm. knowing that they are human beings as well. Yeah. Because you find that they live in fear because they feel that um, 
they are being violated in communities. They are being killed. There is something that is called correctional rape, where you find that they will be raped. And, and those people, when they're raping them, they are saying they are correcting them. So we need to bring a culture, a society, mm -hmm. especially from our homes. Mm -hmm. We need to educate our children that these are people and they've got rights as well. Yeah. In schools, our education system needs to be able to start speaking to our children, our learners, so that they can understand that if they see a young boy or, or young girl being in this way, that person is not horrible, there is something wrong. It mm -hmm. is who they are. Yeah, yeah. And these people are the best people. They, they bring fresh ideas. Mm -hmm. All they want to do is that they want a safe space and a safe environment. Mm -hmm. And as the EFF, we are committing that the EFF's government, which is the people's government, will never discriminate. Mm -hmm. Everyone will be treated fairly. Mm -hmm. so, social, uh, sexual uh, orient orientation yes. will be allowed and uh, everyone should be uh, freed and they have their own choice to make. Stand up, South Africa. Make sure that South Africa, you are counted with me. Run, South Africa. Stand and make sure that our people understand that the need to be revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. EFF is a COVID thing. Greetings to the people of South Africa, Africa, and the world. My name is Titus uh, Tungu. We're coming to you from Winima Digzela Mandela House. And on today's episode, I'm joined by the EFF uh, Deputy Secretary General, uh, Commissar Popi Mailula, who's here to give us some insight on the EFF's uh, plan of action when it comes to the issue of gender and women. DSG, greetings to you and welcome. Greetings, uh, Titus, and thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. When we look at the EFF, in what we can describe as unbroken struggle, 10 years of unbroken struggle, uh, 10 years of unflinching commitment towards the fight against um, gender-based violence, the EFF over the past years has been in the forefront of uh, seeking justice for uh, women, and uh, of course, opposing uh, GBV. Why is this struggle so important to the EFF? Um, the struggle of gender-based violence um, to the EFF, it is so important because mm -hmm. it is in our core of our identity as the EFF. Mm -hmm. Remembering that as the EFF, we're fighting for the dignity, we're fighting for equal rights, we're fighting for people to understand who they are as black children of the nation. Mm -hmm. So as the EFF, we, we, we have been in the forefront in terms of fighting gender-based violence in all areas where we are. Uh, that also came about when in, um, in 2020, we established the EFF uh, gender-based violence desk. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that is that we saw a numerous numbers of of violence mm -hmm. that is being reported at police stations that is being reported in, in 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 our communities and as the EFF we established the desk because we wanted it to be the immediate response okay. to 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 the sketch of gender based mm -hmm. violence mm -hmm. mainly because most of the victims would say that when they go to the police stations the, you will find that they need to stand in long queues mm -hmm. for them to be attended. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, that person has just been raped and is not given proper um, services. Yeah. Proper services. Mm -hmm. And also, we find that even in our communities, because of the status quo of our country, mm -hmm. women got to, to, to an understanding that even if somebody violates me, my child or my grandmother, they there's nothing that the government can do because it has failed those women before mm -hmm. and is still failing those women. Because why? Cases are reported, but cases are not investigated. Mm -hmm. Cases get to court, but those cases never get to be solved. No one, no one gets to be sentenced. Those cases get to drag for years and years. And you find that those victims 
each and every day when they go to court, they must relieve, relieve the trauma. And they must be able to be out there and traumatized. Mm -hmm. So as the EFF, we said we need to intervene. And we needed to intervene with implementing things that are tangible. You cannot implement by just talking and saying. That is the reason you see us in every court outside, mm -hmm. picketing, doing demonstration to showcasing that no woman must ever mm -hmm. go to court or be assaulted or harassed sexually or however, and be alone. Mm -hmm. We needed to be that support structure, which we are. And for those that are sitting at home, mm -hmm. they have been violated. We needed them to assure them that the EFF is here. Mm -hmm. You can come forward and speak to us. We will be with you when you open a case, mm -hmm. even when you go to court, until you get justice. Mm -hmm. This is who we are as the EFF. Mm -hmm. We speak truth to power. Truth to power, yes. yeah. Just to demonstrate that indeed uh, the EFF speaks truth to power, I just want to play an insert now of the DSG uh, demonstrating outside court. Let's have a uh, let's take a look. This young woman who were raped, they were out there. When you look at the unemployment rate in South Africa, these young women were not sitting at home and saying we won't do anything. They went out there. They tried to do creative art. They were doing a music video. Then this man, this monsters, this evil man, they came and raped them. That is clearly evident that in South Africa, even if you work at a hospital, men can come and rape all the nurses. Even if you work at a, you are a teacher, men can come in the school and rape all the children. Even the, our members of, of parliament who are women, they are not safe. These men, they can come and enter parliament in Cape Town and rape them. So even in the workplace, where well, women are trying by all means to support their children and wake up every morning to go and work. That is where the rapists come and rape us. So we will never be quiet and we will never be silent about this thing. We will yell, we will scream, we will shout until this fuckery of the justice system. Take notice, Amanda. By virtue of the work that you do on the ground, it actually confirms that you're not speaking rhetoric. Now, what are some of the prominent cases that you may have uh, been able to represent, uh, stand up for? We have seen in the past uh, the likes of uh, Chekho Fatso, uh, Pule, um, uh, this, this student from the University of uh, uh, UCT, uh, I think it was Uinene, and uh, the late uh, Hilary Gadi as well. If maybe you can just talk us through some of the successes that the EFF has made in standing up for the victims of uh, GBV. There, um, there are several cases mm -hmm. um, that as the EFF we, we attended to. And we attended those cases because we wanted to support their family and we, we were seeking justice for those uh, victims, especially victims of um, femicide. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the cases that we attended was the case of Tsekho mm -hmm. during um, 2020, uh, during COVID. Mm -hmm. It was one of the most um, very sad. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, it was very sad yeah. because of how... Um, of how she was, oh, yeah. of how she was, was killed. Eight, min, eight months pregnant. Yes, um, yeah. eight months pregnant mm -hmm. and hanged and all that. Mm -hmm. So as the EFF, we stood up and we went to the family mm -hmm. and so that we can offer them support, any intervention, any legal support that they need, any counseling that they, they need. So mm -hmm. we went with them throughout the journey for almost three years until um, we, we got justice. And there are other several cases similar mm -hmm. as the case of Hila Rigadi, Mm -hmm. um, as the EFF, we were there as well to be able to assist um, the family and support them. Mm -hmm. But one of the main things that you must know is that any case of GPV is important to us as EFF. Even if it might not be there in the media, mm -hmm. it might not get that exposure. But as the EFF, 
we are attending all cases of GPV that are reported to our desk, mm -hmm. from the national desk to our provincial desk. Mm -hmm. So, so far we've attended more than 5,000 cases. Mm -hmm. In all of those cases, what we want to achieve, we want the families to be supported. And we want everybody to know that collectively as a nation, if we want to stop GBV, it will take me and you to be able to do that. It will take honest men and women who are going to say, I am the one who is prepared to teach my boy child, my boy girl, if I'm a teacher, to teach my learners. Mm -hmm. If I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a prominent person in my community, I would be able to do that, like in churches. Every space that we've got, we must be able to educate each other about gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. And cases are still in our desk. We will do everything in our power as the EFF to make sure that justice is served mm -hmm. at all time. Mm -hmm. And what what can people expect from an EFF government? I mean, the EFF has uh, proven to be always on the side of uh, the poor, the, the victims of uh, GBV. Now, from a government point of view, uh, already we understand there's a GBV desk at a political level, but at a, a government level, what can we expect um, uh, the EFF to do when beyond the 29th of May, of course? <laughs> okay. Yeah. You see in that as the EFF, we, 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 we advocate for gender equality mm -hmm. because we understand that um, gender equality, it's, it's, it's a concept that wants to, to provide justice mm -hmm. for all. Justice in terms of treatment, justice in terms of job opportunities, justice in terms of position of power of leadership, mm -hmm. justice in education, justice in the legal system. Mm -hmm. So our aim is that no one must be discriminated mm -hmm. because of their um, gender expression. Mm -hmm. So once as a government, we find a balance between women and men. Mm -hmm. we, we, we find a balance that is going to say no one is superior. We are all human beings and all our rights must be protected. Mm -hmm. So the government of the EFF, which is going to be the government of the people, mm -hmm. is going to make sure that people are treated equally. People are given the same opportunities in everything. People are given a space, a safe space where they can be able to achieve their talents, mm -hmm. their capabilities, and their abilities. That is the government of the EFF. Mm -hmm. That is coming shortly mm -hmm. in shortly. a month's time. Yes, yeah. it is coming. <laughs> so the people of South Africa must know that right now there is a government of the EFF mm -hmm. that is going to make sure that we are all equal. Mm -hmm. Because no one should feel that as a woman, because I've got mm -hmm. this qualification, Mm -hmm. This experience and this um, exposure mm -hmm. on a certain job. Mm -hmm. But when, when, when interviews are held, even if a woman is more qualified yeah. than a man, but a man gets that opportunity. So those are the things that we, 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 we must align. Those mm -hmm. are the things that we must, we must, we must, we must monitor mm -hmm. strictly so. And EFF is going to do that. Because when all we treated equally, equally productively, all of us, mm -hmm. we are going to make sure that our economy strives mm -hmm. because I know that I'm a participant in growing the economy. I don't feel like I'm a subhuman. I don't feel like just because I'm a woman, I cannot be in this position of power. Mm -hmm. This position is only for men mm -hmm. because a woman's voice is needed in the table. A woman's voice is needed so that it can nature our society and it can even protect our generation. A woman's voice is needed because it brings hope to all of us. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the issues of uh, women, uh, obviously you touched on the issue of uh, economic emancipation, a uh, woman's economic emancipation, and that... Uh, gives a picture of how the women, women in general under the EFF government 
will be protected and somehow be looked after. Now, when you look at the report by the um, United Nations, it reports that uh, three out of uh, one out of three uh, women uh, globally, uh, on average, in fact, uh, they get killed at their homes, uh, mostly at the hands of their intimate partners. Why is that the case? Uh, why in South Africa are we having men or intimate partners who are killing each other? It is. I think it is. It is. Um, when you, when you talk about intimate partner violence, mm-hmm. it is mainly perpetrated by patriarchy, where a man feels that I'm more important and I'm in control mm-hmm. and I'm, I can do anything that I want to do mm-hmm. to my partner. And also knowing that nothing is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Reason being, it's happening where women are being violated by their husband, by their spouse, fiance or boyfriend. And when they go and report, none of these men get arrested as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. So that also gives men that authority that even the government, the ANC government, does not care about a woman, does not care about children, does not care about the vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. So that is also the root cause of all of this. So as the EFF, we want and we will bring a government that is going to make sure that any case of GBV that is being reported Mm -hmm. is being handled as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. We are going to make sure that our courts take cases of GBV seriously. They pay attention to it and then there are no delays Mm -hmm. because the evidence is there. A woman is killed. Mm -hmm. Investigation is done and they find this is the person. There's no prosecution. Yes. Mm -hmm. They delay in Mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Why? It is because the current government of the ANC is the one that does not care. The government of the ANC is the one that is allowing violation of women to happen in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Let's talk instantly about um, the case that was brought to our to our desk as the EFF, mm-hmm. the case of those women who were um, uh, sterilized forcefully. Oh, yes. About now, 475. Yeah, yeah, 475. Yeah. Those women came forward to the EFF mm-hmm. and said, we need help. We were sterilized mm-hmm. by force. Mm-hmm. Then as the EFF, when we took the matter, we also realized that through the CGE, a report was tabled and the findings were there that indeed this woman were forcefully sterilized, coerced actually. Mm. Which is a criminal offense by the yes. way. Yes. In, in one of those hospitals, in, in, in most of them were in Gauteng and in KZN. Now, when the findings are there, no one as we speak has been held accountable for that. No hospital, no doctor, no minister, no one has been held accountable for that. Those women were forcefully sterilized. Why? Why did that happen? Why did doctors have the, the, the guards to sterilize those women? Because if they knew that if I sterilize this woman without her consent, when she leaves here and she finds out, she's going to report me to the bodies and authorities that are regulating me as a doctor. Mm -hmm. That doctor did that because he or she knew that Mm -hmm. nothing in South Africa is going to happen. Mm -hmm. This woman will speak, they will cry, they will do whatever. So the ANC government violated those women. They, they, They sterilized them so that those women now cannot be, cannot give birth. Cannot be mothers. They robbed them of that. And everyone is quiet about that. As the EFF, we are in support. And we are doing everything to be able to assist those women so that they can be able to get justice. Mm -hmm. Because it cannot happen. Do, Do you know 
when you talk about forced uh, sterilization, forced sterilization was an integral part in the injustices of the apartheid regime. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. During the apartheid regime, they used to sterilize black women mm -hmm. so that they can decrease the amount of birth by black women. So the ANC government is doing exactly that to our current women in South Africa by sterilizing them merely because some of them were HIV positive. That's why they sterilized them. That is inhuman. It is. And we cannot allow that to happen. So as the EFF government, we are going to put measures, strict measures when it comes to the health of women mm -hmm. in hospitals. Mm -hmm. And all of those things that did the, that allowed the sterilization to happen under their authority, under their powers, we are going to have them arrested yeah. and thrown to jail and throw the key very far away. Because this is a shameful uh, reality, uh, DSG. And uh, from a legislative point of view, one wonders what is it that the EFF is going to do to hold institutions uh, like the South African Human Rights Commission, like the Gender uh, Commission. Obviously, we need to hold them to account for what they have done. Now, from a legislative point of view, what, what sort of measures are we going to put in place to sort of reposition and ensure that no woman goes through a forced uh, sterilization? It's because when we put people, mm -hmm. when we put leaders in position mm -hmm. where they are going to, to be like your ministers of education mm -hmm. and ministers of education, mm -hmm. we need to put women and men of integrity. Absolutely. We need to put women and men that are going to say, I am here to work for the country. Mm -hmm. We should not put corrupt people, whereby if a woman comes and say, minister, I was forcefully sterilized, that minister will say, okay, I will look into your matter. After a few months, your matter is like, it's, like it's, it's, it's not there. So you ask yourself, what happened? Mm -hmm. It's either the minister went to those people and asked, why was this woman sterilized? And they gave that minister something mm -hmm. to keep quiet. So those are things that as the EFF, we are going to eliminate. Mm -hmm. We are going to put men and women that are going to protect our nation. Mm -hmm. Men and women that are going to make sure that all of us equally so in South Africa, mm -hmm. we are protected. Mm -hmm. We are also going to review and relook mm -hmm. all these policies that are there. Because all of these policies that are there, most of them, those that are undermining our black people, especially black women, they have this oppression in it and exploitation, which is systems that we've seen during mm -hmm. the apartheid time. So we need to abandon. We need to, to, to have new ways of doing things as a country. Mm -hmm. And between July and uh, September 2023, over 800 women were killed, while more than 10,000 of them were raped. Who do we blame? Do we blame society? Do we blame uh, <coughs> SAPs? Do we blame... Uh, uh, our cause, our criminal justice system, who is to be blamed for, for, for this stark reality? At this moment, Titus, we need to blame the current government mm -hmm. because we are governed as a country and the current government is the government of the ANC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is the one that is not having strict monitoring processes okay. in all of this department, mm -hmm. especially in the, in the department of justice, mm -hmm. especially in the police department. No one is following up whether police are doing what is required, whether cases are being followed and investigated thoroughly. Then also when it comes to our judges and our lawyers, you find that them themselves, they don't even understand mm -hmm. the core essence of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. No one is going 
to tell them to go for retraining or assessment so mm-hmm. that they can understand all of this. That's why there are delays in prosecution and judgment. Mm-hmm. So all of these people, they are governed by the ANC government. It is it that must be able to make sure that things are done properly. Mm-hmm. So we should be able to, to relook and we should be able to think as South Africans that where we are right now with all the crisis that is faced by women on a daily basis, but people are still voting for the same government that is abusing them on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. The ANC government, the only thing they know very well in how to do best it is to come and give us stats that 100 women were killed, 50 women were raped. What kind of a government will stand and take a media briefing to tell us that these people died? They collected states of death, but they can't tell us about state of prosecution. Hore, out of these 100 kids that were raped, this is where we are. They just give us those states. And it's like they are proud when they do it. Mm-hmm. Every day, the states of women, they do that very well. Where do they get those states? Mm-hmm. Because when you go to the police station and you report, they just tick. But what happened afterwards, it is what is important to us as EFF. Mm-hmm. We cannot be, as a country, be proud that women are being killed on a daily basis and we are collecting stats for that. We can't. And at, at some point in our country, there was a time when there was a growing trend, there was a public outcry about women saying, am I next? At the time, women's safety was at, at, at stake. And that points exactly to the weaknesses of the ANC government because it's failing to protect its very own women. Yes, even even that it 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 it's a, it's, a, it's a cause that and it's a struggle that women are still facing it today. Women are still by violated as we speak, and all of us, even myself, I ask, am I next? Because the security and the protection of women in South Africa is not important. Mm-hmm. That is the reason, as the EFF, we are there all time to make sure that for those women that cannot be able to stand on their own and speak about such matters, we are going to speak for them and we are going to do it unitedly so, so that everybody feels safe in the country. Mm. And we talked about sex work. Uh, The decriminalization of uh, sex work will be uh, a reality under the EFF government. But as things stands now, those who are um, finding um, a job opportunity in sex work, they are criminalized, they are taken to jail. And the EFF says, no, we are going to stand up for this. This should be, uh, in fact, incorporated, should be recognized as a real work. Uh, if you may just uh, talk us through why the EFF strongly believes that uh, sex work should be decriminalized. You see, where we are right now as a country, mm-hmm. we live in a vicious circle, whereby, I'll make another instance, mm-hmm. 475 women mm-hmm. were coerced to sterilization. Mm-hmm. The government is going mum about that. No one is held accountable about that. Mm-hmm. Now, women again are saying because of the unemployment, because I cannot find a job and I need to support my kids and my family. And then they go to a se- to, to sex work industry. And then those women are criminalized. They are taken to jail. They are brutally harassed and brutally abused. It's like women are suffering the, sev- the severest oppression mm-hmm. in this country. Just for being a woman and having, like, being able to, um, your, 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 your reproductive organs, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a threat. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they want to take away your rights mm-hmm. for you to have kids. They sterilize you. You want to feed your kids. You want to be, um, to bring food on the table at the end of the day. You are still being violated. So that is why as the EFF, we say women should be given the opportunity to be who they want to be. Mm -hmm. Women should be given equal opportunities in any industry that they want to work. 
If a woman wants to be in leadership position, must be supported fully. Mm -hmm. If a woman wants to be an engineer, she should be supported. If a woman wants to be an artist, she should be supported. If a woman wants to be a sex worker, she should be supported and protected. We must not come up with this moral statuses of, of, of some sort of religion. But when the same moral standard of religion is quiet when about 500 women are sterilized by the government. No one is being held accountable. No one is in prison about that. Mm -hmm. And a report has been there. The findings has been there. And after that, on that report, when you read it, there's somewhere where it talks about medical negligence. Mm -hmm. Because when they were sterilizing those women, they were not doing it with care. Some of them right now are living in severe pains. It has affected them psychologically. They are living with trauma mm -hmm. every day. That here I am a woman in South Africa. My identity has been ripped off mm -hmm. in my womb. Who am I? Clearly, the current government has no regard for women. Yeah. It's too bad. It's bad. When we look at the issue of... Um, gender equality is still a serious problem in, in, in South Africa. And I want to focus more now on uh, workplaces. There's been a phenomenon that women mostly do not occupy positions of uh, authority. What is the EFF stance on that phenomenon that women in the country or in workplaces, do not necessarily occupy positions of, um, you know, authority as compared to their male counterparts? In the EFF, we are a, a, a true example, mm -hmm. especially when we talk about um, gender equality, mm -hmm. because we are practicing it at this moment as we stand. Mm -hmm. When you look into deployment in parliament, Mm -hmm. EFF makes sure that we have a 50% representation or even more of women in those deployments in parliament as well as in council. Everything that we do as the EFF, our number one mission and goal is that we should have 50% representation, mm -hmm. even in positions mm -hmm. in the organization from the um, officials, mm -hmm. from the CCT, mm -hmm. from the PCT and from the regions. Mm -hmm. Women occupy spaces there mm -hmm. and there are more or there must be 50% or there must be even more. Mm -hmm. So we have started that with our organization mm -hmm. so that we can demonstrate mm -hmm. that when women are given an opportunity and support, they can be able to flourish. They can be able to, to bring new innovations. Mm -hmm. When women want to go, women entrepreneurs, they should be given the support that is needed. Mm -hmm. When women wants to venture in anything that they do, they should be supported. Mm -hmm. So as the EFF, we are a demonstration of that, mm -hmm. that women are valued in the organization. Mm -hmm. Because why? Women carry the best of the best in everything that they do. Mm -hmm. And once we can have women representation in many areas, mm -hmm. Most of this department, it might be Department of Health, Department of Education, mm -hmm. we can be able to have voices that are going to say, this is totally wrong. Mm -hmm. This must not happen. And that person is not going to be ashamed that when I speak about the wrongs that are doing in the department or maybe in an area where I work, I would be um, like, I will be removed whatsoever. No. Mm -hmm. So as the EFF, we want to bring that. Mm -hmm. In fact, last week I attended class, right? So there was a heated debate about uh, gender equality and women representation in workplaces. And I give an example of the EFF uh, leadership. If you look at the leadership of the EFF, it's three males and three females. And you would remember much better, there was a conference of the EFF, I think, in is it Eastern Cape, 
where the leadership that side elected only women, I mean men. Mm. And that was that decision. The CCT had to intervene and say, you know, you have to go back and ensure that there's female representation in the, stru- in the structure of the uh, PCT. So that surely shows that the EFF is a leader of society. The EFF leads uh, by example, DSG. Yes, indeed, because uh, you see, once um, a conference of that nature, like the pro- um, the the provincial assembly yeah. of the Eastern Cape happened, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the outcomes was that that there was uh, something totally wrong mm-hmm. with with um, that uh, those that leadership of the province, mm-hmm. and you can understand that as an organization, we had to take a bold decision. Mm-hmm to say they must go back and be able to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And also remembering that assemblies, people mm-hmm. get elected, mm-hmm. you understand? Mm-hmm. But as an organization, because we said, even if that process wasn't was um, a, a, a provincial um, conference mm-hmm. and people were elected, but we had to come and intervene and say you cannot have a structure where women are not represented, especially in the officials of the province. Mm-hmm. Because why? We we are advocating for that. Even inside the organization, we want to bring that horror. Even us as organization, where we see that we have not done the right thing, mm-hmm. we must be able to stand bold and say we are going to change this regardless of anything. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about the issues of GBV, it's widespread. And uh, the current government, it initiates something like 16 days of uh, activism, uh, activism, 16 days of no violence against women and children. Maybe we should have something like 365 days of no violence because surely it's an everyday thing because if you read, uh, there are reports that suggest that, you know, women are killed almost every three hours in the country. Yeah, in the EFF, we've got um, 365 days of mm-hmm. activism. We've got 365 days of making sure that whenever we see violation or abuse or harassment happening to the vulnerable people, our mothers and our sisters, we will stand up. Mm-hmm. This 16 days of activism, when you look at it clearly, it is something that has to do with people just stealing money of the government. Because during the 16 days of uh, activism, you will see the ANC people. They will have massive programs. Just a talk show. Conferences. And in all of that, money is involved. People are being being transported. People are being brought. Hotels are being booed. Catering has been done for 16 days. They are stealing money in the name of fighting gender-based violence. And during those 16 days, days of activism. Mm -hmm. It is their actual program of stealing. (laughs) So there's no 16 days of activism by the ANC. It's 16 days of stealing money, Mm. which is supposed to help women and children. Money that's supposed to go to shelters and homes. Money that is supposed to have program, intense program in schools. They are stealing it for their own fed bellies and for their own fed pockets. So we must not be fooled by 16 days of activism. There's no such thing in South Africa. Mm. So clearly the EFF is going to be a completely different uh, government uh, from the ANC. And let's look at the LGBTQIA plus community. Uh, More often than not, uh, people are still conservative. They are not embracing the community as it were. Now, how is the EFF finding it easy to stand up for this community and going forward, what can we expect the EFF government to to, to do from uh, perhaps a policy point of view when we take over government? The EFF government is, the EFF government is, is it, 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 its aim, our aim mm-hmm. is number one to treat every human being equally, mm-hmm. irregardless of your gender expression. So the LGBTQI plus community, mm-hmm. as the EFF, we want to commit and assure them that we are going to protect them. Mm-hmm. We are going to do everything in terms of changing policies, 
in terms of amending bills, which are, are hindering their, their, their dignity. Mm -hmm. Because this community, they live in fear, mm -hmm. number one. They live in fear that they can be killed at any time. Mm -hmm. The reason now they live in fear is because they know that if they are killed, the justice system of South Africa is not going to do anything. The police are not going to do anything. So already that is double oppression. Mm -hmm. You living in fear of being killed. And after knowing that even if I get killed, I'll never get justice. Mm -hmm. So these people, you find that we, the government of the ANC is trying to put them in a corner so that they cannot participate in the economy of the country. Mm -hmm. They cannot participate for their personal growth. They cannot be able to do things that they want to do because of that fear. So we must be able to remove that mm -hmm. and to be able to champion new methods that are going to educate our people about this community because they are people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why would you as a parent, you give birth to a child, another parent or another parent out there say your child is not a uh, real, your child is not like a human being because your child is gay or lesbian. Why would we do that? So we need to be able to, 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 to reinforce mm -hmm. measures in our schools. If we need to, that in schools, there must be lessons that are going to say you respect another learner, mm -hmm. no matter how they are, no matter how they look, mm -hmm. you respect them. And I think it was last year uh, you have been crisscrossing the country, uh, engaging with uh, women from all walks of life, including the LGBTQIA plus community in a dialogue. What was the your, your key takeaway? What did you observe from the dialogue? What were the women uh, saying uh, and how can, you know, their situation be uh, improved? Th their situation can be improved if we're going to have a government that is going to genuinely care about those women. Mm -hmm. Because when, you, when we speak with victims of, of, of gender-based violence and we get to engage, um, most of them have lost hope. That is one thing. They have lost hope in everything. Because of how things are done and how they are being treated in all aspects. Some women are being harassed at workplace. And when they go and report those measures, th those cases, mm -hmm. no one is, is listening to them. Mm -hmm. So most of the women have lost hope. So as the EFF, we must be able to do anything in our power mm -hmm. for them to understand that there is a government and the government of the EFF that cares about those people. Mm -hmm. Because once we can give them that, they can be able to have the strength and the power mm -hmm. to stand up and fight. Mm -hmm. Especially when you talk about the issue of intimate partner violence. It is one sad reality where when you are married and you are being abused and you, you are scared to speak, you are scared to stand up because mm -hmm. the setup is it's marriage. You must not speak. You must not do anything because you, you fear that you are scared that you are going to be judged by your community. You are going to embarrass your family. So that is why you find most women sitting in those abusive relationships at all times. And sometimes it's an issue of financial dependency because you are not working as a woman. You've got five children. If you leave this abusive man, where do you go? How are you going to support the kids? So you find that most women will stay there because of those situations. But once we are a government of, the government of the EFF mm -hmm. is going to ensure that women are being empowered. And when we empower women, we are going to do everything so that we can have, um, we can have programs mm -hmm that are going to strictly say that in this village, mm -hmm. all the women every day must go to the center 
so that they can be, they can learn maybe how to sew. They can learn how to, to bake. They can learn things. It's, it's something that the government of the EFF is going to do. And we are committing to that, mm -hmm. that we are going to do everything to empower women in our country. Yeah. And part of the solution to the problem, the EFF proposes for the establishment of um, uh, specialized courts to deal with GBV. We, we want that mm -hmm. because you find that a case of GBV will be on the roll mm -hmm. for almost like two years. Mm -hmm. And every time when the victims and their families and us as the EFF, we go with them, it is very sad to see a child who was, who was raped and with the mother and they are in court. Mm -hmm. When you get there, they just say the, the matter is postponed. You can see the, the, on their face how disappointed they are. You can see the sadness. Mm -hmm. After that, they come and they're like, what's next? Because... Lawyers knows, even the panel and everybody know her, if a case is going to be postponed whatsoever. The least that they could have done is to alert the family. And when victims of GPV go to court, they transport themselves every day, no matter how far your case is. They don't have money. They never even given counseling. So that is why we need to have specialized courts. Mm -hmm. And those special yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is yeah. the sad reality. That be done away with. Yes. yes. Mm. And then when we speak about specialized courts uh, that are going to deal with um, GBV, mm -hmm. those courts, we are going to try and make sure that they are the center, they are in the center mm -hmm. of every location and every town and every village. Mm -hmm. They should not only be in towns whereby transportation for the families, it's, it's too far. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a center that is in the center of our area. And the EFF government will make sure of that. Mm -hmm. Because transporting a magistrate mm -hmm. to go to a court in Shawela, yeah. it's easy. This person gets paid every month by our taxes. Now, taking a family of five from Shawela and you bring them here in the high court, They'll spend about 300. When they go back home, they must spend another 300. I mean, where's the logic in that? It doesn't make um, sense. Mm -hmm. mm. And DSG, uh, there's been, well, uh, a notion that obviously from those who are uh, perpetrators of uh, GBV, uh, especially rape, people will give a, a lame excuse of saying, no, because of the way she was dressed up, maybe that's why she attracted the perpetrator. Should the way women dress uh, be a concern in our society? Should women stop wearing mini skirts because someone might rape them? How do we go about addressing that situation? Any man who who thinks in that way that if a woman is wearing a miniskirt or something, it's, it's, it's in, he, she's inviting a, a man to rape her whatsoever. That man is sick. Only a sick mind will think in that way that the dress code of a woman is the one that is inviting for rape. It's, that man is sick. Any man who sees a young child and wants to rape that child, that man is a monster. So at this moment, when we are dealing with a, a sick man or a monster of a man, we must deal with that person harshly because that person is a danger to society. Mm -hmm. It's a danger to our, to our, to us mm -hmm. as, 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 as women in the country. Mm -hmm. So that person should be removed totally yeah. in society. Yesterday, it was a human rights day where obviously South Africa was um, commemorating uh, the Sharpeville uh, massacre uh, because this was the struggle against the past law as uh, under the year, under the apartheid government, uh, black people were, you know, mm. subjected to carrying dumb pass and all of that. How would you describe uh, the commemoration? Is there anything to celebrate? Would you say 
the blood of the generation of 1960 died in vain uh is the current government has it done anything to sort of you know um ensure that those fallen heroes and heroines their blood is not uh, in vain yeah as the EFF we we will make sure that um our fallen heroes that fought for our fought for us and fought mm-hmm. for where we are today and fought for our freedom mm-hmm. will always be remembered mm-hmm. so each day that is a holiday because of our history it is very much important to us as EFF mm-hmm. because we are remembering and commemorating mm-hmm. those ones mm-hmm. and when we remember them we should be able to take the struggle on where they've fallen we must be able to take the baton mm-hmm. and say it is my responsibility because this person has fought for this it is my responsibility as a young woman in south africa or a young man in south africa to be able to fight Mm-hmm. because we have not achieved what our fallen heroes have fought for at this moment we are not even yet there for as long as our land has not been returned to us as the rightful owners of the land whereby 72% of whites own the majority of the land in south africa as the eff we need our people need the land because with the land we'll be able to do so much mm-hmm. our dignity will be brought back mm-hmm. so we will continue fighting mm-hmm. aluta continue aluta continue and the land that's where we're going to build this uh, specialized uh, specialized cause at dsg exactly and there's been a concern also about uh, looking at the stats of gbv uh, police who do not uh, investigate uh, such cases under the EFF government obviously heads are going to roll yeah under the EFF government we are going to make sure that things are done on time mm-hmm. and we are going to monitor mm-hmm. those things mm-hmm. that every every person who is bestowed with the power mm-hmm. of authority mm-hmm. in whatever field Mm-hmm. we are going to make sure that they deliver if you are meant to protect children we are going to make sure that you protect them if you are meant to educate mm-hmm. our kids we are going to make sure that you educate them mm-hmm. if it means that we must educate you again on that subject we will send you to assessment and anything so that you understand mm-hmm. why and what and where should i educate uh, our kids mm-hmm. so um, heads are going to roll they are going to to roll because right now we have people that are in power and they are useless mm-hmm. we must first get rid of them we must first get rid of all useless ministers out there who are not doing anything at all you only see them when there is imbizonyana i sort of go direng eh with their blue lights or anything that is when you see them but what they are doing we can't we are not seeing anything our health system there's not even a health system when women go to hospital to give birth they give birth on yeah. benches some clinics in south africa are still denying um young women like uh, services uh, reproductive services um things like your 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 pills you know mm-hmm. to protect themselves mm-hmm. contraceptive contraceptive yeah they are still denying them that mm-hmm. by questioning them that why do you need this the police system which I'll say again there's no system they can't track anything those people mm-hmm. a case happen in case at end they can't punch them the the, the server or a laptop where is going to say yeah this guy has also raped another girl in Kwazulu Natal or in Limpopo but this guy ran away now is in Gauteng they can't track that only after 10 years that's when they will be able to do that so we we really need to to change so many things mm-hmm. but as the EFF government we are prepared and we are ready to do all of those things 
And if one asks uh, DSG, uh, on the 29th of uh, May 2024, why should people vote uh, for the EFF, if you may just briefly explain? On the 29th of May 2024, the people of South Africa should vote for the EFF. Mm -hmm. It is the government of the EFF that is going to free our people from any bondage, from any oppression that they are experiencing at this moment. Mm -hmm. The EFF government wants to usher a society that is the society that is safe, a society that is going to allow our people to live mm -hmm. and to live in peace. Our people should vote for the EFF because the EFF, it is the answer to our problems. And the EFF has implemented all of these policies, mm -hmm. all of this mechanism in front of the people of South Africa and demonstrated that we are capable and we are ready to govern. Mm -hmm. That is why our people should mm -hmm. go and vote for the EFF. And I trust our people of South yeah. Africa that they are going to vote for the EFF. And our readiness to govern is underpinned by the commitment uh, of obviously wanting to see clinics run for 24 hours a day, seven days uh, per week. Uh, 24 hours per day and seven days per week. You spoke about women, um, the, the treatment they get from mm -hmm. uh, public uh, health, uh, right? There are women, there have been reports of women who go to clinics and they are turned away and they can't give birth and they only give birth outside uh, hospitals or rather clinics. That's, that must be very worrying and definitely should be something that is going to be uh, prevented under the EFF government. Yeah, and under the EFF government, we are going to prevent that and we are going to ensure that mm. that never happens to another black woman in South mm. Africa. There was a case in Limpopo where a woman gave birth by the gate of the clinic, merely because the lines inside the clinic were long. Mm -hmm. And when she kept on insisting that this is the time she wants to give birth, no one even uh, uh, listened to her, the nurses and the, and the sisters in the clinic, until she gave birth by the gate. Mm -hmm. They only came when they came to fetch her and the child at the gate. Mm -hmm. That is how sick uh, this matter is. Mm -hmm. And we should at all time avoid that and prevent that. Now, when we speak about clinics in South Africa, it's, it's like a clinic opens at nine o'clock and then it closes at four. Like a supermarket. Exactly. <laughs> so it clearly says, Hore, you must not mm -hmm. get ill after five mm -hmm. or before nine o'clock when it opens. So the government of the ANC is treating our people as robots you will only have access mm -hmm. to medical attention at a clinic when it's between nine and five. But after that, mm -hmm. whether you give birth at home in the streets, whether you die, it does not care. Mm -hmm. That's why the EFF says every what should have a 24-hour clinic operational and people should have access to it. That also goes to our hospitals in South Africa. The conditions of our hospitals in South Africa, it's like, it's, 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 it's worse. Mm -hmm. So we need a government that is going to put people that are going to make sure that they change that. And we are going to build more clinics. We are going to build more hospitals mm -hmm. that are going to be accessible to our people mm -hmm. in the villages and in the township. Mm. You held a successful rally in the Northwest uh, DSG. You had deployed there as the convener of elections in the Northwest province. Uh, yes. Are they ready to usher in uh, economic freedom? The people of Pokonibu Pirima, they've always loved the EFF. That is why you saw the birth of the EFF happening in Marigana 
after the massacre of the Marigana. The people welcomed the EFF and knew very well that this is the only organization that is going to make sure that the people of Marigana get the help that is required. And even after the vote on 29 May, we are still going to intervene more to those widows of Marigana. We are going to put things in place that is going to secure and even protect their children in terms of education, in terms of their tertiary education. Mm -hmm. So the Northwest province is a province of the EFF. For us is to be able to make sure that our people in the Northwest go out in numbers on the day of voting to go and vote. It is our responsibility and we will make sure us as the leadership of Northwest mm -hmm. that people go out to vote because mm -hmm. people are ready to vote. We must make sure that on the day of voting, they do go out to vote and mm -hmm. to vote for EFF. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been an issue of uh, voter apathy, um, DSG. But if you look now, if you look at the IEC numbers, um, quite a number of uh, youth have shown interest in these uh, elections uh, in particular. Uh, would you say the people of South Africa and uh, the youth in uh, Northwest as well are ready, are showing sign of uh, obviously, uh, you know, being under the banner of uh, EFF and ensuring that uh, on the 29th of uh, May 2024, we take over government through their participation. The youth are demonstrating confidence mm -hmm. to the EFF and are demonstrating that they they want the government of the EFF to be the one in governance mm -hmm. after the 29th of May. Mm -hmm. How they are doing that, it is for them registering to vote mm -hmm. because they understand the power of their vote. Mm -hmm. They understand that as a young person, this condition that they are living in must change. They mm -hmm. understand that the rate of unemployment must change in South Africa. Mm -hmm. They understand that the youth want to go to school and they want to get free quality education. Mm -hmm. So the youth understands why they must vote for the EFF because EFF is giving solutions to what they are facing at the moment. And for them is to go and vote for the EFF on 29 May so mm -hmm. that we can be able to deliver. We are ready to deliver. Mm -hmm. Economic freedom in our lifetime. Economic freedom in our lifetime. Thank you very much, DSG, for making time and giving us insight on the EFF uh, gender and women, uh, elaborating what the EFF stands for when it comes to the issues of gender and women. So we really hope we're going to catch up with you uh, quite soon. But uh, thank you very much for making time. Thank you very much, Tim. And thank you very much, Titus. Yeah, thank you very much. So we have come to the end of today's episode of the EFF podcast. Uh, remember to uh, click uh, like and subscribe to the EFF YouTube channel for all the latest uh, news about the elections. Remember, on the 29th of uh, May 2024, South Africa is going into the general uh, national and provincial elections. So we all have a duty, a national duty to go out and vote uh, for economic freedom in our lifetime. I mean, it has been 30 years, 30 years, there hasn't been any uh, economic freedom in our lifetime. What we have achieved in 1994 was merely uh, political power. So definitely, I urge you all South Africans, be responsible, stand up for not only for you, for the future gener generation as well. So we've come to the end of the show. My name is Titus Tungo. Until we meet again, Uda, you can get Kanimam. Tobela, Mulweni, Sanbonani, Nda, Ae, Ashaweta, Elo, Almal. Revolutionary greetings to all the people of South Africa, Africa and the diaspora. On the 29th of May, President Ramaphosa has declared that day as a day of election. We have agreed in the EFF that this is our 1994 where we restore the hope of our people under the battle cry, land and jobs now stop load shedding. 
for us to achieve victory on the 29th of May 2024. We will once more ask for your support. We are asking you to donate all kind of things that you can donate to the EFF. We are asking for cattle. We are asking for goats. We are asking for sheep. We are asking for chicken. We are asking for canned food, perishable and non-perishable food can be donated to the EFF because we believe our hardworking volunteers must be catered for. We are coming to you because we don't want to rely on any individual. We want you to finance your own revolution. Anyone who wants to inquire about donating any kind of contribution you seek to make, please call 071 2556201 or 0721775737 I repeat call 0712556201 or 0721775732 We rely on you we are now preparing for a day after victory because ours is to win no matter what. So we're looking for your positive response. Please, any region of the EFF, provincial office of the EFF, national headquarters of the EFF, you can bring any kind of contribution. No contribution is small. It will have an impact. Victory is certain. Hasta la victoria siempre. I thank you. Stand up South Africa Make sure that South Africa You are counted with me Run South Africa Stand and make sure that Our people understand That the need to be revolution In South Africa Is guaranteed That under the EFF This country will be the better EFF is a covert thing